welcome back to Sprague Brewer Homestead. So we're going to kind of continue what I've started a while back and we're going to go through the breeds that I actually have here in the rabbit tree. So today we're going to talk about the American rabbit. So the American rabbit is, is an American breed, as you might imagine from the name, uh, developed in the early 1900s here in the United States. And these guys actually used to be like the premier fur and meat rabbit. They are different than um, your New Zealands, which are considered a commercial type. What makes these guys different is they're, they're called a mandolin type. And I'll see if he will kind of cooperate. So what a mandolin type is, and it doesn't help when you have a buck that doesn't want to pose. A mandolin type tends to be kind of low and long in the shoulder, and then they rise up in the rear. And he's a little young, so he still likes to be a little bit busy. But you can see, as opposed to your New Zealands, which kind of come out and, and go straight up, these guys have that very long shoulder. They're a very long-bodied rabbit, and they're, they're a very large rabbit. Um, so your bucks in these guys range anywhere from 10, or 9, excuse me, 9 to 11 pounds. Your does are going to be 10 to 12. I tend to have does that are on the big end of the weight scale. So after they've had a litter or two, a lot of my girls will actually push 13 pounds. So they do get pretty big. Uh, I like a buck that shoots for the middle point. So we're looking for mostly um, going to be 10 pound bucks. I do have some that are pushing more of the 11 to 12 pound category. These guys come in white and blue, and I'll bring a blue one out here in a little bit. Um, but they are red-eyed white. A lot of times we get these confused when we go to shows, because I'm one of the few people up here in the Pacific Northwest that show. I get a lot of people that will come by and go, that is the ugliest, longest shouldered New Zealand I've ever seen. And you have to explain, no, we're not a New Zealand. Or when they see that they actually have the big, wide mandolin type, they want to know why it has red eyes and not blue because they get confused sometimes with the Beveren. Now the Beveren has a much longer fur than the American does. Uh, the whites do have a blue eye. There is a different ear shape and a different head shape to the Beveren. But for people who have never seen them, it's kind of easy to get them confused. Uh, these guys are what's classified as a six class rabbit, meaning that they're not considered to be full grown until closer to eight, nine months. So that means we show in six different classes. We do a junior buck, intermediate buck, senior buck, junior doe, intermediate doe, and senior doe. Uh, your intermediates are just kind of like the teenagers. Uh, your juniors are going to be babies up to six months. Your intermediates are the six to eight months, and anything over eight months is going to be your seniors. Uh, these guys are a really cool breed. When I first looked into the Americans, I actually wanted to get Flemish Giants. Um, I don't advise using Flemish Giants as meat rabbits, as everybody knows, but I do like the great big head, the great big ears, and the body type, and I thought they'd be fun to show. Well, then I came across these guys, and these are um, a heritage breed. They've been on the endangered list. We were on the top 10, and I think we've fallen off now until like 12th or 15th, I think. Um, but we are kind of an endangered breed in the United States. We kind of fell out of favor. Um, so we don't see them quite as often. As I said, I'm one of the only breeders in the Pacific Northwest that I know of. Uh, there is one other very nice woman and her daughter who I occasionally will show with. And then there are just little pockets of people using them for meat rabbits here and there. I've sent off a number of them, you know, over the last three or four years to people that were going to get into the breed and are using them as meat rabbits, but they just don't make it to the shows very often. So, um, you just don't see them very often. Now, we do have a really good group of breeders in California. There's, a, there's quite a few people in California breeding them. And we've got a pocket, the last time I checked, in the Midwest. We've got a breeder down in Texas. We've got uh, one up, I believe, in Pennsylvania. So, we have them all over the place. Um, if you're looking into this breed, I would really suggest getting in touch with the National Breed Club, which is Breeders of the American Rabbit National Specialty Club. Uh, they do have a breeder listing and can kind of point you in the right direction for them. I actually got this fella from a California breeder. This is Santana's Drifter. As a, I didn't have a white buck. I, I had had one briefly from another breeder that just didn't throw good rabbits. We were having some malocclusion problems, so we ended up getting rid of him, and I brought Drifter in. Really cool temperament. We don't get a lot of spraying with these guys, which... I'm sure if you've watched my other videos, you know I'm not real big on spraying bucks. Um, so I don't have a lot of spraying problems. You can see kind of, you know, he's got a little bit of a pea spot on the back. 
but he's very, very bright white. I don't really clean him other than when I go to shows, you know, we straighten his fur up and get all the loose stuff off. But he stays pretty white on his own. He's not a big spritzer. Uh, the blues don't tend to be big sprayers either, which is nice. I just absolutely cannot stand walking into a barn and having everything coated with pee, which you do get in some other breeds. They're real personable. Uh, he likes to have his ears rubbed. He'll come to the front of the cage. He wants to see what's going on. They'll take treats out of your hands. The biggest problem I have with these guys is that they're very long bodies. So when you turn them over, let's see if Drifter will let me here. Trying to do their toenails, you're looking at a rabbit that is huge. And he's smaller. I've got does that are like three pounds heavier than him. So trying to hold him down and do toenails can sometimes be a problem, but I do manage to do them all on my own. So they're not too bad, um, but that would be one of, one of the things that I don't like about them. They do, of course, take bigger cages, where the Harlequin does a lot of times are in 30 by 30s. These guys, the bucks, really need to be in at least 30 by 30, and the does need at least 30 by 36. They tend to be real busy bodied, as you can see. Uh, we go through more treats and more toys with the Americans than any other breed. Pine cones are a big deal. We, we give them pine cones off of all of our pine trees um, for treats, keep their teeth worn down. Because if you let these guys get bored, they will pop their teeth something terrible because they will chew on the wire. Uh, they've got to have something to do all the time. So they're very, very busy. The does will produce nice big litters. We get anywhere from 8 to 13. 13 has been the biggest one I've had. Not unusual to go 10 in a younger doe. I've got a first time doe right now, I think, that has 9 for her first time. So, uh, nice big litters. They grow pretty quick. These guys, usually we're hitting 5 pounds for butcher weight at uh, around 10 weeks. I've had it in 8, but for sure by 10. So, they're a good meat rabbit, good personality. They're just a fun breed, and I recommend them to everybody who wants to get into a big heritage breed. Um... I mean, you're, you're preserving a part of the American history as far as rabbits. Because so many of our breeds come from overseas in Europe. But these guys are what we consider an American classic. Um, just a really cool breed and definitely something you want to consider if you're doing heritage stuff on your farm. Alright, so here's an example of a blue. You can kind of see that really dark slate blue color. She's a younger animal. She's only uh, about five months old. So she's not all that big yet very busy <laughs> doesn't want to stay still um but you can see that really nice color coming in uh the only dqs really for these guys other than your basic stuff is in your blues you're looking to avoid white spots white toenails and stray white hairs she's kind of going through a molt so i'm not too worried about it yet but i did check all of her nails and they're a good dark blue color which is what you're looking for in the blues of course in your whites you're going to have white nails so the things I'm looking for when I start evaluating these girls, and you can kind of see, I am looking for hind end. As big and as wide as we can get. I want a shoulder that's not quite as wide because they need to taper on back, but you want a nice full hind end. Again, these guys were meat rabbits. So you're looking for where the meat is. And the meat is going to be back here in your rear legs and in that loin. So you're looking for a nice big booty on them. The other thing that's a DQ in the blues is when you get a bright blue eye. This is something they've been talking about as we're revising our standard right now. They've been really talking about the, the eye color thing. Uh, blue gray is allowed and uh, so is brown eyes, but the blue, the true bright blue is not something you want. If you see that, a lot of times what's happened is they've gotten other breeds in there. Um, and these guys should only really color, come in those two colors. They should be blue or they should be white. Occasionally you see stuff like, um, I've heard that there's a, a strain of red ones in the Midwest where some people were trying to develop a red. So they were trying to get red, white, and blue. And there are also blacks. Um, again, these tend to come from something else. I know a lot of people were breeding in Flemish Giants at one point and also the Beverins. Yes, you're a busy girl. So there's a lot of different stuff that's been crossed in. So if you want to look at doing the Americans and want to do pedigreed Americans, absolutely join the National Arbery Club. And you do want to get an ARBA standard and really learn what that means to avoid buying anything that maybe isn't actually a purebred. 
All right, so that's my little brief synopsis over the American Rabbit. Maybe not so brief. Um, if you have questions about these guys, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. We've had them for, I want to say I've had them about three and a half, four years now. Absolutely love them. We are talking about downsizing them in the barn just because I am showing by myself up here. There really aren't any other breeders. But these are not something we will ever probably get rid of. Um, that is until I just get too tired of trying to wrestle down 10 to 13 pound rabbits. <laughs> But as of right now, they'll definitely stick around. They're a fun heritage breed. We really enjoy them. We hope everybody at least considers adding them if you're doing heritage stuff to your farm. And that's it from Sprague River Homestead. We will see you next time. Happy homesteading.